Navigating through the energies of New Earth is not an easy process and can become extremely overwhelming at times. As we all ascend into higher frequencies, we're all being guided to embrace our own unique divine pathway, a pathway created in the vibration of love. Join Vibe Nation radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcott, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within and understand the message being shared even greater. When you live in the frequency of love, there is no competition, so Carrie will be joined regularly by fellow soul family members who will bring forth wisdom and knowledge she knows should be shared on a global level. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners to see what message Spirit wants to share with all those listening in for the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, come and join us now on Vibe Nation Radio, here on the IOM Radio Network. Hello, 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 my friends, and welcome to Vibe Nation Radio, where guess what? I'm back. Yeah, it was uh, very interesting how uh, the last few hours have shifted, and I am very, feeling really, really blessed to be back with um, Chris Anderson, who has been the host of Vibe Nation Radio since the tide has turned last month. So Spirit has got the two of us together today, and the biggest message that we got when we spoke for a few minutes before the show was, let's talk about acceptance. And this is something that I feel that every single person on this planet is going through right now, and I know that Chris has a lot to say as well. So Chris, thank you for uh, inviting me on the show today. I feel honored. (laughs) Well, it's uh, your show, but with a backward spin, and... That's what makes it so much fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah, one of the things that um, I was just looking around for some ancient wisdom and came up with some of the discourses of Wu Hsien, uh Chinese mystic, and uh, he wrote uh, a little discourse or a series of discourses from Behind the Mind. And I thought this is kind of a good way to launch for today's program. It says... Something is lost when you stop thinking, and that something is you. The person was not there before you were born, nor will it be there after you die. Instead of struggling with the person, why not leave the personal altogether? It does not mean the extension of the pers- extinction of the person. It means only seeing it in right perspective. Even if it is only for a single second, the experience of no you has the power to be life-altering. It is the very transcendence of the twin prisons of past and future. And uh, that really, I think, is uh, the theme that we need to look at that was probably initiated with this last full moon that came up in uh, the sign of Capricorn. And Capricorn is all about, you know, me, self-aggrandizement, me getting out there and getting my jollies, getting everything that I want in life. And uh, every once in a while we have to step back from that person and just experience life without a sense of self, without a sense of identity. So whether or not you're you know, being confronted with all kinds of insane situations or your life is... Uh, you know, very low-key and no problems at all, Um, if you can take yourself into a quiet place and just experience a brief second, a millisecond of nothingness and see what that feels like, you will discover a whole different dimension of what life is. Um, And, you know, that will take you to the next level of your life. So what do you think about that, Carrie? I think that that sounds like right from the get-go that, you know, when you're saying this is the quote that you want to focus on, it was absolutely beautiful because it truly is what's happening. And people finding self without that personality, and I understand this because I teach personality traits. So being able to retrain the monkeys so that, um, when I say the monkeys, the ego, that, you know, put your creative life source energy into 
um, you know, there's something that spirit is saying for me to talk about that. A lot of people don't understand the difference between ego and the shadow side. And I don't know why they're pulling me there all of a sudden. And I, I think people just, those that are listening, and if you don't understand, the shadow side is part of us. We have a shadow side. The shadow side is not a dark, it, it's, it, it can hold lower vibrations, but it's not a place to fear. It's a place you want to embrace. It's the ego that steps in the way that causes you to think the shadow side is a dark place. So I was just told to throw that in right now, Chris, as we're talking about this. Right, and that's definitely a part of the journey. It's a, a part of the process of awakening and uh, self-realization. You know, these are mm. ideas that uh, that are part of uh, the oldest recorded um, styles, I guess you could say, or types of spiritual path. So you mm-hmm. go back and you find these ideas in the Gita. You find these ideas... Uh, and Vendetta, you find these ideas in Sufism, you find them in the Greek philosophers. So this is not a new thought. This no. is not a new concept. Um, yeah. And people have been tapping into this and have discovered that this is a way to master mastery over a lot of the circumstances that we're currently being confronted with in this world, you know. Uh, yes. Because it appears that everybody out there uh, has an agenda, and that agenda is going to be problematic for your life. And uh, we have to get um, we have to get a little more advanced in our awareness and our capacity to believe in good things. And mm-hmm. the way to do that is to step back from that personality that you have created, that ego identity mm-hmm. that is always vulnerable, that is always about to get run down by a freight train. And, uh, you know, so so it is necessary for us to retreat um, yes. more than just periodically. We should make it a regular practice as part of our day. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when we, when we talk about acceptance, this is a big part of it, that it's not just accepting yourself for who you are. It's accepting others for who they are and not allowing who they are to change who you are, which is the law of allowing, which I do know a lot of people, again, are having difficulties with this. So, you know, I just a lot of people that I've been working with are dealing with things that they might have done 15, 20 years ago. And they're being triggered again of, you know, maybe they're having a carbon copy, the same thing's happening again, it's a repeated pattern, but they're not, they're like living in regret. And this is where people need to understand that we need that in that me time to go within and accept this and not to suppress it, to know that you are a stronger person today for who you are because of that situation. And you shouldn't have regret because regret, regret will hold you back. My friends, everything happens for a reason. So as this stuff comes up with you, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I did this or I can't believe I said that, you know, we've all done it. Again, we're a soul having a human experience. So don't beat yourself up because of something that you said, you know, 10 years ago, 50 years ago, or even last week, because we change every day. And if you can embrace that in yourself, knowing you're becoming a better person, knowing that it's going to make this process a lot easier, my friends. Yes, that's definitely true, and it's also going to help you step away from all those ideas that we tend to cherish about being a victim. You know, and I think that's the most insidious part of the nature of the ego is that the ego is always projecting all of uh, all of our conflicts and all of our upsets and upheavals and blockages on those around us or on circumstances around us. And the truth is. Everything that you encounter is uh, its an outpicturing of your constant thinking. So if you can get to the point where you're not going to be in resistance to that idea, then there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be able to step away from that whole idea of being a victim and uh, arrive at a point where, you know, victimhood is uh, it's no longer desirable. It's no longer something you know that you find that you need to uh, to embrace in order to get through your day so just imagine the amount of empowerment that you can experience from stepping away from being a victim and starting to say 
you know, I did this, and yeah. now that I'm willing to own it, then I'm going to be able to change it. Yes. Got to own it first. <laughs> so we, uh, like I mentioned before, we did have that big full moon that just um, came roaring through the cosmos the last few days. And uh, it was um, at about uh, right around 17 degrees Aquarius. I mean, uh Capricorn, and the sun was 17 degrees Cancer. <clears throat> and Cancer is a very emotional um, place in the zodiac. All of our fears, all of our um, hidden agendas that we've been trying to outrun are frequently brought to the surface when the sun is moving through Cancer. And um, when the moon opposes the sun, it kind of creates a little bit of a shrill energy. So a lot of people were probably um, noticing that state of consciousness where there was a real clear sense of division, you know, duality that was coming up. And uh, wondering Mm -hmm. about, you know, what, what did my life really mean up to this point? What have I accomplished in life? So... It overall was a full moon that is very revealing, and I think people are going to start recognizing the revelations over the coming yeah. months as to what was brought to the surface during this this journey through uh, the Zodiac. Oh, absolutely. I can, <laughs> and I know that there's a little bit more. I, I mean, Chiron is also in retrograde, and I know we're about to go into commercial break, so I don't want to get into this, but... You know, Chiron is the wounded healer. We've gone into retrograde, and he's there until December 4th. So when we get back, my friends, we'll go a little deeper into this about how, again, this is about a time of clearing and accepting all that is around you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Home Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you been searching for a perspective beyond the mainstream? Check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pasquale and Diana Gold Holland, on Share International Radio for thought provoking views behind the news. Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on OM Times Radio. You can also find us at shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. How to be a great dad in 15 seconds. Bike ride, go fish, walk in the park, phone call, milkshake, play catch, picnic, fly a kite, tell jokes, laugh, talk, read a story, tell a story, bumper car, swing set, bowling, pillow fight, cut loose, stay tight. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Vibe Nation Radio, where today I'm co-hosting with the summer's host, Chris Anderson, better known as One Feather. And just before we got into commercial break, um, Spirit reminded me to bring up how Chiron, who represents the wounded healer, also went retrograde on July 1st, which I know a lot of people I work with started to feel the effects of that right away. So, <clears throat> Chris? Well, yeah, and, uh, you know, really you have to look at that whole concept of the wounded healer. Um, Mm -hmm. Healing is available to everybody at all times. And really it's contingent upon acceptance. We have to be willing to let go of the ego's agenda and the ego's um, attachment to the wounds that we imagine that we carry with us. And Mm -hmm. Chiron is really a, a good representative of that process in realizing that no healer has to be wounded you know the the true healer is the one who has accepted healing 
first for themselves and then has become a conduit for healing as they go through uh, their journey through this world. And so really the, the enigma or the paradox around that whole idea of the wounded healer has to be looked at and reviewed in a very deep way. And the way we do that is ask yourself, what is it that you're not willing to give up that is a source of guilt and a source of shame and a source of sorrow that um, that once you do give it up, you can be completely healed? And the manifestations occur not only in the mind, or initially they occur in the mind, but then they work themselves into manifestation in the body. So if you're dealing with problems that are very, very physical, problems with your body, problems with your bank account, problems in the material world, it's because you're you're still holding on to something that is causing that, that is the source of that, that is invested in guilt. And we really have to look at, you know, how do we approach guilt? Uh, is there a need for guilt? And uh, mm-hmm. once you get into that deeper level of that meditative state, that place where even for a moment you cease to be who you are, what happens is that you suddenly realize none of this is real. All of your life, all of the lives of all of the people who have ever lived uh, never really happened. It's a dream. It is uh, a movie. It is a script. And it has no power over you. But you have to be willing to forgive others as you ask for forgiveness for yourself. So that's the key. You can't hold any um, <clears throat> any kind of a belief or any kind of a, um, a, a sense of um, having been um, wounded or compromised by some force outside yourself. You have to take mm-hmm. ownership of these things. You have to be willing to look yeah. at them and live with them, and more importantly, to let them go. And that's really mm-hmm. how the wounded healer works. Is yeah. It's uh, a thing where you're using it for your own protection. And yeah. the only thing I can say about it is that Stop doing it. <laughs> I love you. Just straightforward and to the point. Right, Chris? <laughs> Absolutely. That's the only way to approach it. But, uh, yeah, so uh, it, it is, uh, it is uh, you know, it, it it is so easy to fix these things. And yet we are mm-hmm. in such incredible resistance because of that initial idea that we did something wrong, we should feel guilt, and uh, then we project it onto those around us. They should feel guilt. Everybody's wrong, you know, and poor me, yeah. I'm the victim of the world. Yeah, the blame game. Right. Different analysis. Yeah. It's, uh, and as I'm talking about this, my left hand's getting really itchy. So my friends that are listening, you might want to let go of that. Maybe some abundance will come your way. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm rushing. Like, my left hand got so itchy when we were talking about this. That's quite fascinating. And yeah. as you just you just mentioned that, that if there's things that are blocking you in the physical realm, including abundance, then there's something that you need to go deeper within to try it. And again, guys, it's not always that easy to figure it out. It really is because the ego can get involved. So it's almost like I tell people that when you get signs, a lot of times you can't put them together. Like, just see them as... We're playing connect the dot and spirits giving you the dots and eventually you'll have the crayon and you'll be able to put it together and you'll see the bigger picture. But sometimes it takes time. So don't beat yourself up if you don't get it right away or you're like, oh, I thought it was this, but really it's this. Again, this is part of the process of accepting who you are and just go with the flow. That absolutely is the only way you can approach life is to just let go and kind of paddle your little canoe out into the middle of the river and enjoy the ride because that's what exactly. life is really all about. But as you and I both know, Chris, a lot of people don't take the paddle and put it in the boat and go with the flow. They take the battle and they try to go against the current. <laughs> right. right. And that's and that's not a productive thing. 
But yeah. um, and looking, you know, at the planetary positions as we're moving forward here, uh, the next 48 hours has an interesting little um, barb, I guess you could call it. We've got the moon in Aquarius that is coming up on opposing Mercury and Leo. And uh, um, I would say this evening and early morning tomorrow, a lot of people may be feeling uh, that communication has gone against them, receiving negative messages, hearing things that they didn't want to hear. But this, again, is the uh, like the aftershocks of that full moon. So you probably are going to have things that come to your attention, uh, things that are perhaps said about you or about uh, different aspects of your life that um, cause you a little bit of frustration, can bring some anger issues up to the surface. And with this, um, there's a potential for an immense amount of clearing and healing. So the next 24 hours could give you some insight and breakthrough that could be pretty powerful and pretty important in this next level of your own advancement. Beautiful. And that goes kind of with uh, what I've been channeling in the Vibe Report about right now we're from the 7th until the 17th, we're building this new foundation of who we are at a soul level. And tomorrow and the next day as well, I've got this is really about um, who am I. And really, you know, you've had to wait and you may have to wait a little bit longer for what you are trying to manifest. But if you believe at a soul level who you truly are and you're speaking truth and really in the vibration of love, which is the 432 hertz, my friends. And I, I want to really make this clear because a lot of people are saying in order to be in the vibration of love, you have to be in 5D. This is not correct. I, I just This is something that really upsets me when people say this because when you're in 5D, 100%, my friends, that means you're in spirit. So, you know, the, the love is 432 hertz, so 4D, the lower half of 4D is where you find the love. So don't wig yourself out because you can't get to 5D. This is something I'm being guided to tell those that are listening that follow me because I know a lot of you have this. You send me messages about this all the time. What is about this? So, again, the heart chakra is 432, my friends, not 5D. So, sorry, Chris, I just had to bring that in because that was something that uh, Spirit's been very strong with me to talk to people about. Right, and you know that kind of ties into a course in miracles, uh, which is you know the thing that I'm pretty well anchored in right now. And really, the course reaffirms over and over again that we were created in the image and likeness of God. And all of the great sages, all of the great masters—Jesus, Buddha, wh whoever have identified God as number one being life itself. So mm -hmm. the fact that you are alive means God is with you. God is a present essence or a force in your life. And then all the great masters have also pointed out that God is love. And love is not a biological reaction. Love is not, you know, getting a nut off or having an orgasm. Love is much deeper than that. It is acceptance. It is purity. It is harmony. Uh, it is uh, the most creative force in the, the universe, and it is the extension of who you are. So since we were created by God, who is life and who is love, those are two components that can't be taken away from us. You mm -hmm. cannot lose that part of self. Those, those are simply things that are there um, that are inherent in the truth of who you are. So you can definitely lose a body. You can get mangled in a car wreck and go to your next incarnation. You know, you can lose your hairline. You can lose your waistline. But um, in truth, there is never a separation from love. There is never a separation from that consciousness that created you simply by thinking about itself. You know, that really is what the total totality of, of the real creation actually was. It was God recognizing, oh, I seem to be alone. Well, I think I'll just replicate myself. I shall just, you know, create myself in this state of eternity and 
and put it forth within myself so that I will never feel like I am alone. So Mm -hmm. in truth, we are God within God within God, and it goes on into infinity. It's multidimensional, and it's part of the abstract nature of God. So mm-hmm. when you when you arrive at that threshold, begin to realize that you are God, and not your ego. You have to be very alert to that. Your ego is not God. <clears throat> your ego wants. As my to left be God, ear goes, my my left ear is going as you're saying. <laughs> absolutely, we we get all of these uh, ego agendas and these ego desires and this ego identification. Uh, I am this person, I am that person. But it's when you step into that silence, when you can let go of that constant inner dialogue, me, 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 saying things, then in that emptiness, there is suddenly something that fills the empty bowl, and it is vast beyond concept. It is serene, it is ecstatic, it is pure, it is holy, it is truth, it is love. And that's really the only way that we can really begin to recognize the truth of who we are. We start with that idea of I am alive, yes, I am life, and then we go to the next stage, I am love. And when we start to to groove on that, when we start to really dig into that part of our Mm -hmm. truth and identify with love, then some amazing things start to actually occur. Yes. Absolutely. And, you know, we live in a new earth, my friends, where, you know, we, yes, we want our mind and to be in check with our heart, but by vibing on our true essence, that's how we bring the magic into our life without any expectation of how that essence is going to appear. So when we get back from commercial break, we'll go a little deeper into this. Stay tuned, my friends. We'll be right back. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Own Times Radio. When Dad needed help getting around, I became his driver. Soon enough, it was up to me to be his housekeeper and financial manager, too. When he moved in, I became his cook and even his nurse. But no matter what roles I play, I know I'm still his daughter. We understand the roles you play. So to help, we created aarp.org slash caregiving, where you can connect with experts and other caregivers. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Vibe Nation Radio, where today's show we're calling it Expect the Unexpected. Carrie's back to co-host with the summer host, uh, Chris Anderson, better known as One Feather. So today we're co-hosting the show together, and I'm so in the moment right now, Chris, I can't even remember what it is that I said before I went off to commercial break. So please feel free to just jump right in. (laughs) Well, yeah, I can understand. That is uh, kind of a... A spacey time here in the uh, space-time continuum, and it's not a bad thing. It just uh, is what it is. But uh, one of the things we've been looking at was the idea of uh, love and, you know, trying to access love, I guess, is probably the best way to uh, create some some conversation around that. The truth Mm -hmm. is that love is like water it is uh, like uh, you know something that seeks to fill whatever is empty so if you empty yourself out 
you won't just end up in this empty region. That's that's what the ego is trying to convince you of, that you are this empty thing that has no value. But the truth is, when you get to that place of stillness and can empty yourself out, love is always ready to enter into that, that vacuum that you have created. So that really is the challenge for all of us right now is to come to a place where we're no longer distracted by the uh, the ongoing interior dialogue of the brain and the mind, and we're no longer distracted by the uh, body functions, you know, that uh, little bit of uh, bloating that you've been feeling the last couple of days here. Don't worry about that. You know, we mm-hmm. just have to turn off all of the distractions, all of the different things that um, are pulling us away from our silence, are pulling us away from uh, experiencing our true self. And as we go through that journey of turning those switches off, more and more we discover that there's a sense of enrichment and anticipation that starts to build and engulf us. And at the bottom of that list of switches, when you flick that last one off, then then you know, there's the tsunami, then the wave of awakened love comes into your consciousness. So don't be afraid to be quiet. Don't be afraid to close your eyes and just listen to your breath and um, observe your breath and then, you know, allow yourself to even let go of that. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been, uh, those that I've been speaking with, I, I've been channeling that July is all about living your truth. And for those that go a little bit deeper with the energy work, I would assume most that are listening to the show do, that you really need to work really strongly on your chakras during the month of July, especially your throat chakra. So I know a lot of people have had throat, sore throats. They've had sinus infections. Um, they're getting laryngitis. They're coughing a lot. And again, this is when, when you're starting to go through ascension symptoms, again, if you need to go see a doctor, please go see a doctor if you're feeling that's the way. Um, but it's almost like align what is going on with you on a physical level and look a little deeper to what chakra is actually aligned with that body part to see if maybe there's something there that you can do some energy work on to be able to help clear this because they're telling me that July is a really big month about balancing yourself. And a lot of people need to, like you said, you've been saying a lot, Chris, that you don't want to be on the duality train. Yes, we live in a duality world, but you don't want to be living in the vibration of duality because a lot of people that are starting to go that way, they're feeling lonely. Mr. Sad and Lonely is showing up. And this is what Chris has been talking about too, about, you know, Don't feel that you're all alone because when you really truly get in tune with soul, that love of God is there. And this is God wants you to open up, whoever your God is, open up to God and observe what is going around your own reality. Never mind what's going on 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 a global level, but what's happening in your reality. And it's almost like spirit is saying right now, a lot of people want to be able to detach from these outer things that they're putting so much energy into that truly if they focus on themselves and put the love into self, it would actually help whatever they're putting energy into even more. Does that make sense, Chris? Oh, it absolutely does. And that, you know, that is definitely the, the journey. That is the path we are collectively on right now. And uh, again, it's, you know, it's identifying whatever resistance you have to being in that, um, state of advancement because Mm -hmm. there's a lot of comfort for the ego in holding on to the past even if the past is something hideous where you know you've got a boyfriend that beats you up three times a week or you have a uh, a circumstance with a neighbor who you know every time you buy a new dog the, the, the neighbor poisons the dog I mean whatever your hideous uh attachment is you have to be looking, you have to take a look at that with a willingness to let go of it. And mm-hmm. you have to be willing to f- forgive yourself for holding on to it or, 
you know, creating it to begin with and then holding on to it for as long as you have. So Mm -hmm. there is some radical healing that is floating around out here for us, but we have Mm -hmm. to be willing to let go and just let it, uh, you know, let it fall into place, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And I do feel, again, with, you know, Spirit's been saying, you know, focus on happy, happy, joy, joy as much as you can right now, because that's really building a, a positive foundation for people to have stability on. And clarity, it was, they're saying clarity will start to come in after the, around the 16th, but then come around the 23rd, they're saying Mr. Control Monster and Mr. Fear Monster are going to come out and things that people have been refusing to see, they might get a love slap from the universe to say, hello, do you not see what's going on here? So again, I don't know what's going on, guys, anybody who's listening to this, I am not an astrologer. This is what I channeled, but I'm sure if you go a little deeper or, you know, Chris could uh, validate some of this that. There's something about the new moon in Leo, too. It's going to be really, really strong. So it could cause a lot of people to go off balance and not really stand in truth is what I'm feeling. Well, absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's two weeks away, but uh, it's not, in reality, it's not that far away at all. And we do have to be ready to take on that uh, new shift Mm -hmm. that comes with the sign of Leo because Leo is... The expression of passion and joy and love. Leo is, you know, the sign of the heart and uh, the sign of the sun. So as we're uh, getting ready to enter into that Leo time, um, everything is going to start lining up with pure potentiality for you to really embrace uh, your core reasons for living, which is, you Mm -hmm. know, to be an expression of God, to go out and be a light into the world so um and interestingly enough right after that we'll have mars entering into leo uh, and that's going to be kind of a i guess you could say kind of a jolt in some ways because mars is um you know movement mars wants to move forward it wants to open doors it wants to take the next step so by the end of leo time by uh Late August, we're all going to be restless as all get out. You know, we will have moved through that solar eclipse. We will have moved through a lot of um, issues that come up that we have tried to outrun for a long time. And it's going to be interesting to see how collectively we take that Martian energy and start, you know, moving our feet forward one by one by one. And that's interesting because you've, I was just talking about this the other day that I've, you know, at the beginning of the summer, I, I channeled what was going on in the summer and I've got starting August 23rd, something called the wave is going to kick in. And I'm like, what is the wave? I've never heard of that energy before. And at least not in my logo, my slogan of what I use. So saying what you just said, that would make it understanding that this is a new energy they're saying, this is why they're calling it the wave. So I think that energetically as a collective, we're going to be affected a little bit more if we don't stand tr- t- take control of our own energy per se. You'll get caught up in the wave of everyone else. Well, and you have to just imagine what a wave is like. It can either take yeah. you to great heights or yeah. else you you can end up in the trough between waves. Yeah. So yep. that's simply a matter of decision on you your choose? behalf. Yes. Where do you choose to go? Yeah. And it's interesting that it starts right after because I've got an energy cluster around the uh, eclipse. And it's either you're fearing or you're, you're love. You're, you're in the vibration of fear or love. And they really want people to understand that everything that we're going, into, going through right now leading up to what's happening is helping you to prepare at a soul level to truly create that what you truly want to manifest in your, in your reality. Right. Exactly. Um, another thing I... Uh, Pull up here from A Course in Miracles uh, a little uh, paragraph that has some interesting ideas that kind of tie in with what we're talking about here. Um, it says, a simple question yet remains and needs an answer. Do you like what you have made, a world of murder and attack, through which you tread your timid way through constant dangers, alone and frightened, 
hoping at most that death will wait a little while longer before it overtakes you and you disappear. You made this up. It is a picture of what you think you are, of how you see yourself. A murderer is frightened, and those who kill fear death. All these are but the fearful thoughts of those who would adjust themselves to a world made fearful by their adjustments. And they look out in sorrow from what is sad within and see the sadness there. And that really is what the the world is reflecting back to you. So if you're seeing a world that is really a mess and scary and tragic, then you have to be honest with yourself. A lot of this is your own judgments, your own thoughts, your own beliefs that you've embraced. You've created that world in, internally in your own um, identity of, of self. You have created this self that um, goes through life doing things that um, you have moral judgments against. Every time you know you don't pay a parking ticket, uh, basically you're breaking a law that you made so that you could feel guilt about it. You know, no matter what it is. So we have to be willing to lift our eyes up and look at life from a higher perspective. If we're looking at our own little sense of identity um, and projecting that sense of identity into the world that we're surrounded by, then we are an ongoing victim of every situation, every circumstance, and every individual that we encounter. Mm-hmm. That's something that people need to just think about there for a moment there. I can hear people going, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, that is. It's uh, Well, again, this is why I am a teacher of A Course in Miracles is because the Course poses questions that you are probably not going to ask yourself. So that's why it's good to read the damn book, you know, because mm-hmm. the book is going to say, you know, is this is this how you're thinking? Yeah. So think about that, my friends, when we go to commercial break. Are you really thinking like this? And uh, we'll be back after the commercial break, and I'll do the, uh, the weekly message from Spirit. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Home Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Dr. Kevin here, and I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on The Dr. Kevin Show, where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today, so you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. Hello, I'm John Lithgow. Manatees are unique among the most amazing animals on Earth, but they're endangered. We pose the greatest threat to their survival. Many manatees are killed or injured by boats or other recreational activities. I'm a writer of children's books, including one about manatees, and I believe education is the key. You can be part of the solution. Please contact Save the Manatee Club right now. Call 1-800-432-JOIN. Thank you. Welcome back to Vibe Nation Radio, where today I have come back for today's show with uh, co-hosting with Chris Anderson, who is doing an Indian summer with Vibe Nation Radio. And this is the time where I used to go in and do a reading and tap into um, the listeners' energies and what spirit really wants to say to all those that will be listening to the show, either live or down the road. And they're saying right now with what we've discussed that Spirit is saying that a lot of you have realized that you're not truly putting the energy into your um, your tree of life, per se. They're showing me that we're being given opportunities here to create this new of 
life, who we are. And a lot of you have made that decision of where you want to go, but your vibrations are not matching that. And they're saying that a lot of people are saying that, oh, my gosh, things are taking so long to do. And they're, oh, my gosh, it's so slow. And it's causing people to get a very emotional inside. And a lot of people are they're saying right now are, are still watching their back, that they're saying it's really important for people to let their guard down and embrace whatever is sent your way. Because a lot of people right now are in a situation where they love people, but they know on a vibrational level they're toxic to their soul. So they're saying, again, this is a process. This is about you finding your way back to yourself and not to beat yourself up over this because too many people are conforming to this and you're f vibing on what you don't want instead of what you do want. And this is blocking you from listening to your gut and causing you to stay at the standstill that you are. So they're saying, be patient with this rebirth that's taking place because a lot of you are in stagnation simply because of how you are vibrating. Your words, your thoughts, and your feelings are not matching. So please be a little bit more aware of this, they're saying. Take the time for yourself to go into that no man land, just to be with God, just to be. And see what comes out of that. See what kind of thoughts you get or visions you get. Um, you know, stand up for yourself and know that you're a very, very strong soul and that you are pure source energy. So they're saying that as you start to shift and you're letting go of things that no longer vibrate in the same vibration as you, you will become a stronger soul. But again, be patient. This is a journey. It's not a race. And that over the next couple of months, again, who you are today is not who you're going to be a couple of months from now. So do something good for yourself today, knowing that your future self is going to say thank you for doing the work. So, Chris, do you have anything to add to that, my friend? Well, just um, at the same time, keep your, your consciousness in a state of acceptance because one of the traps that we fall into is uh, the trap of expectation. So when we get yes. into having dialogue about you know evolution, about coming times, and about spiritual growth, our ego grabs that and runs away yes. with it and says, oh, I'm going to be like this. I'm going to be walking on water in 12 days here. So, you know, if anybody has a boat uh, that's uh, out in the middle of the pond, I can walk out there and retrieve it for you. So be realistic about what's going on with this evolutionary yeah. shift and all these different energies that are flowing through. Um, as Wu Sin said, expectation is the grandfather of disappointment. The world yeah. can never own a man who wants nothing. And think about that. The world can't own you if you don't want anything. So, again, it's stepping back into that realization that I am complete. I am whole. I am created as God created me. I don't have any needs. I don't have any lack within me. And when we step out into the world without that um, that desire to have something, then we're no longer a victim of the world. And yeah. I think that's going to become a, a growing issue for a lot of people. It's going to be something that needs to be looked at over and over and over again. Absolutely. I do see that. And uh, that's why I always say live life like a sunset. If you have no expectations and you have um, no assumptions of what's going to take place, you can't be disappointed, my friends. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with throwing out vibes of how you want to feel. But again, it's a vibration. It's not an actual physical, um, you know, I want this car. Right. So it's again, this is about shifting and understanding how to work with the ego and not work against it, because you want to be able to become friends with the ego so that you can work with the shadow side, because, again, the shadow side is nothing to be afraid of, my friend. We all have it. Right. So I think this is a big theme that's coming up for a lot of people right now is to embrace that shadow side and do the shadow dance. I can hear that song. Uh, Andy Gibb. Shadow dancing. <laughs> Here, my dad's coming in to say hello for a moment, obviously. <laughs> well, and and the, the shadow really um, disappears once the light is brought into it. And the light is love. Yeah. You know, that is yeah. that is the, uh, the uh, uh, foundation definition of what light yeah. is. Light is a presence of love. Love is a presence of yeah. light. And yeah. so if you bring love into every situation that you encounter what you're going to do is you're going to eliminate 
the ego. And that's really kind of an astonishing process when you start to experience it. Because the ego is, like you said, it's just basically a shadow that has no actual substance to it. So Mm -hmm. when you bring love into those different regions of your own consciousness and you anchor it in, you know, your sense of self, I am love, use that as your affirmation. I am love. I am light. I am a light unto the world. I bring love into the world. All of a sudden you have redefined uh, who you are, especially in terms of what the ego has told you that you are. So yeah. it is a, a very empowering journey, and it's something where the journey gets lighter day by day because the core of the journey is letting go, letting go of beliefs, yeah. letting go of fears, letting go of failure, letting go of the past, and most especially letting go of this definition that you created for yourself that is uh, incredibly flawed and mm-hmm. uh, reclaiming the truth that you are this boundless and uh, uh, invulnerable and invincible spiritual being Mm -hmm. that uh, even if you're not wearing a body for a while, if you, you know, if your body gets run down by uh, uh, truckers on I-50 or whatever, then uh, you you can get another body. It's not that big a deal. But the important thing is to realize that your body is not who you are. You are a spirit. You are a spiritual being. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And again, I've been channeling that July is all about the month of truth, guys. So again, I just love, again, without being connected to too many astrologers, how um, when I start to put the channel in what they're talking about, it, it's again, this is about trusting in self and knowing that, you know, I trust my channel so that, you know, when I talk to somebody like Chris and he can validate a lot of what I'm picking up in an astrology way, but it's because I trust myself in that channel that I have to God within me to know that, yes, I can speak about this and know this is truth. And again, this is also part of the journey of learning to trust yourself and knowing that, again, we have to accept who we are and we can't, it, acceptance is such a big thing right now. And I think that's why we started off with this and why we're ending it with this, that you have to accept yourself for who you tr- truly are. And if you don't know who you truly are, then take that time to, you know, we all have to get to know ourselves at a soul level. At some point, we've all gone through this and we'll always be doing this as we continue to ascend and go into higher frequencies. You're always going to find out new things about yourself like, wow, that's really beautiful. But it's it's now in a in a love vibration, like you said, that it's not so much of, oh, I can't believe this crap is happening again. It's like, wow, this is beautiful. And this is what we have the ability to do, my friends. And this is what, you know, Chris is saying that when you, you know, when you when you step into that course of miracles and and find that God within you. Miracles happen, and they truly do, especially when you're living in the moment. So when God comes knocking, you're going to answer, and they're going to give you beautiful things because of your vibrations. But remember, if you put anything and you expect what's going to come knocking or assume what's going to happen in your life, you probably will be disappointed, which, again, why are you doing that to yourself? You don't need to because whatever is given to you is a gift to begin with. Just start to see things a little different, my friend. Right? That's that's very, very accurate. And if anybody is interested in Course in Miracles, I just finished a new website, put it up. Uh, it's been up for about 10 days now, and I've got a lot of videos there about the course and a lot of references for, for the course. And you can find it at themiraclewithin.org. And it's all one long word, themiraclewithin.org. So if people are curious as to what it is I'm talking about all the time, you can find a lot of interesting answers there and have kind of uh, a fun time playing around. Beautiful. And for those who are um, not aware that I'm actually, my newsletter, Embracing Your Divine Journey, is now kind of turned into Carrie's Chronicle because of the amount of information that Spirit is asking me to share. So it's not really a newsletter anymore. It's kind of a newspaper So I'm calling it Carrie's Chronicle. So I'll be sending it out very soon. And it goes in a little bit deeper with a lot of stuff that I am working with my clients and through the Vibe Report and stuff that I don't necessarily share on social media, just simply because I want my followers that follow my newsletter 
to know that I value you and I appreciate you. And there's always little things like I've had a little special that came out today or over the weekend. And this is something I like to give back to my followers. So, you know, CarrieTurcott.com. You can register for Carrie's Chronicle right there. And it will probably be coming out later this week. Do you have anything else going on this week, Chris, that you want the people to know about? No, just my ongoing adventures. Uh, I'm producing about <laughs> four different uh, YouTube videos a week. And wow. uh, you can follow me on you on uh, Facebook with all kinds of craziness. But uh, the important thing is, that, you know, we all just need to accept ourselves, love ourselves, and stop comparing ourselves against, you know, uh, the presence of others around us because then we start hating them and we start hating us and uh, that's kind of a lose-lose situation all the way around oh absolutely <laughs> not a good thing so just remember that my friends this week and remember that you know you're a beautiful soul having a human experience so don't beat yourself up when you have an emotional meltdown or you have to yell or scream or carry on that's just that's the human experience Embrace it. Go with the flow. Don't live in it. And on that note, there's around it. Yes, let go of the guilt. So, Chris, thank you very much for having me on the show. I love co-hosting with you. And it was uh, uh, an absolute delight. And uh, who knows? Spirit might have us together again before the end of the summer. So, stay tuned, my friends. I'm sure Chris will have uh, who's coming on next week soon. And have a wonderful week until I see you guys all again. Thanks again, Chris, for having me on. Thank you. Bye, people. Bye.